Hello everybody, my name is Michael Byrne and I'm involved with Offaly History Centre at Bury Key Tullamore and today I want to talk about the town life in High Street Tullamore, the buildings, the business and the people. I have people to thank as always in these exercises, in particular Parik Siri who has assisted me with the photographs and with the sound recording. So we'll start now with uh, just an overview of Tullamore. As you know, the Charleville family owned Tullamore since the uh, 1600s and their house, Redwood, and later the castle post-1800 are about an Irish mile uh, from the town centre at the end of Charleville Road and into the main. And you can see from that nice coloured map of about 1900 how the roadway was diverted to enlarge the estate and also to take in the new lake, the artificial lake uh, near Mukla. The town centre part of it is on the is on this particular map, mainly the canal and interestingly the barracks and also Tullamore River. There were no houses on the Charleville Road at that time except Elmfield and it was not until about 1900 that they began to build there. So all of the very fine houses in Tullamore, not all of them, but most of them in the town centre, are in the area from Bridge Street, O'Connor Square, or Charleville Square as it then was, and High Street, moving on then to lesser quality but good in, in O'Moore Street and Cormac Street. So to come to some of these changes then, this view is a very interesting early photograph of High Street. It's only 18 or 1900 rather, but it's very interesting for what's in it. First of all, on the left there, you can see a two-story building with um, a pediment over the door case in front of where those carriages are. That was raised to three stories in 1900. It was known as Colton's Hotel until the 1950s. And uh, be, and it was built, I, I should have mentioned, about 1750. So in, in, in many ways, that typifies the intention of the first Earl of Charleville, Charles Moore, to have high quality housing in High Street, because that opened the new street as regards the type of house that the Earl would have wanted in High Street. And next to that then is is another two story house uh, which was the demolished in the nineteen forties to provide for the Ritz Cinema. And then we move on up the street, all very good quality houses, and we get to the three story over basement house, which is now Farrelly Solicitors. And you can see then the way the 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 street projects out further to the to the the housing rather projects out further to the street, which would suggest to me that those houses are earlier than some of the ones in between, such as Farrelly's. But we know Farrelly's is 1789. But the house beside it to the north, the lovely stone house where the Kilroy TV showrooms were, is an earlier house of 1750s. The town at the time was lit by gas between 1860 and uh, 1921 when electricity was introduced. Now on the other side of the street then, again fine houses. Uh, the first there is Daniel O'Carroll, which is a pawnbroker's because you can see the three balls of the or spheres of the pawnbroker on that three-story house. And then you know the the brewery tap, the old shop front is there and the brewery was behind that. It was owned by P&H Egan and their name is over the fascia on the shop front. Next is the lovely old front of what was more recently G.N. Walsh's garage with the original railings and a lovely door case. That's quite a fine house. It was used as a, as a constabulary barrack in the late 19th century and was built about 1744. While the next house with the lovely stone door case of Conway and Kearney, that's, that's 
probably about 1750 and the door case may be later. And we go up the street then, you won't see too much from, from this photograph, but most of the houses up the street until we get to the art centre are about 1790s. So you can see then the evolution of the street and in over time from 1750s. In fact, it, it might be the case that some of the houses on O'Connor Square West, that would be G.N. Walsh's shop and garage and the brewery tap, and what's now the post office building, which is, of course, a replacement of the 1990s. Those houses, those first four houses, might actually be 1720s, 1730s in some cases. The map that I'm showing you now is Tullamore in 1838, and that has the gardens and the houses in High Street, uh, which you can see here moving up from Charleville Square. Now, I should tell you that there were about 49 houses in High Street when one includes the four in what I call Charleville Square West. But if we take that four off and some other buildings, such as the Presbyterian Church, which is there beside the Municipal Town Hall, that is actually later. It's about 1865. And so we end up with about 40 houses or thereabouts that were occupied as residential stroke business properties in the 19th century and which we can look at more carefully in the 1901 and 1911 censuses. You will also note the very long gardens in and around where the old hostel was on the top of High Street where the motorworks was on the right of this map, on the lower right. Their gar those gardens are nearly 600 feet in length and the street is closed off on the south side by the large house known as the motorworks house in more recent years and which was built in the 1750s beyond that then on the road to charleville is charleville street or cormac street nowadays which was mostly built by thomas acres and he lived in the large house which is now the municipal town hall now, none of this would have happened without careful planning, and the person who initiated the town planning would be the first Earl of Charleville of this first creation, Charles Moore. It was his family who purchased stroke, were granted the, the town in the 17th century, around 1620, and he died uh, childless in 1764, and the property was inherited within six months by his grandnephew. Uh, and the Earl and his, his nephew are commemorated on this monument, which is in St. Catherine's, and which is shown here on your right. But the young, the young nephew, he wasn't that young, but the nephew died rather soon after his inheritance. And then the property passed to his son or grandnephew of Charles Moore, who was only five weeks old. And so the town was managed by the grand nephew's mother until 1785, when again the, uh, the that grand nephew, who was known as Charles William Bury, and who in turn became the Earl of Charleville, he uh, was the one who did a lot of additional planning for Tullamore in the 1780s facilitated by the balloon fire of, of the same year, 1785, and also by the economic environment, which was good, and by the coming of the canal in 1798 and the provision of a lot of, of, of barracks, or well, I say provision of them, temporary barracks for the soldiers who lived in Tullamore during the Napoleonic Wars. As you know, or may know, there was a threat by Napoleon to invade and the British thought that he might come through Ireland because of the Bantry episode. And so they had soldiers stationed in Ireland with over a thousand alone in Tullamore and two thousand in Burr or 1200 and more at Clononi, all near Shannon, the River Shannon and along the canal to facilitate rapid movement and to protect possible invasion via the Shannon. Hence you had the Martello Towers. 
Anyway, we're moving away a little bit from our high street to tell you about that. And Charles Moore would have been around in the 1720s when the first uh, town windmill was provided in the hill at Cormac Street behind the Cormac Street houses and the courthouse. And you can see that windmill on the map there where the letter E is in Tullamore. And where you can see the letter H in High Street, that is where the the Protestant church was built in what was Church Lane then and became Church Street. And the general layout of the town coming in from Dangan, going out via Clara and not Kilbegan, and going down the main street towards the O'Connor Square or Charleville Square as it then was, and on up towards High Street is shown on that 1777 map. And it was really Charles Moore who was involved in the in the planning and building of the larger houses in the town. Now, of course, not all the houses were large houses. There were many lanes off the main streets where the ordinary people, poor people lived, and they also lived behind the barracks, which was at the... Uh, western side of Patrick Street. So the the layout then was improved and in this map of 1809 <coughs> you can see the canal <coughs> has been now uh, provided from 1798 and at the between the O and the R there on that 1809 map you can see what was Putchahon, Rappery Alley with a lot of houses along the old road to Dublin which was via Turles Pass. It came in there at Dangan and went directly to the right towards um, Turles Pass. And of course the canal then changed all that with the provision of, of the waterway and also the new Bury Bridge. And then we had a second new bridge at the Kilbegan Bridge about 1805 and a third bridge about 1809 at the Clara Road known as Cox's Bridge. And again, there was an old road that went through what is now Kilbride Street and connected in with the barracks. The barracks is under the T and O in awfully historical there. And then the old parish church that I mentioned of 1720s and which was shown on the Taylor and Skinner map can be seen there with the word church uh, on the map. And interestingly, now you can see the development of High Street on this map and also the emergence of um, of Cormac Street or Charleville Street, as it then was. Uh, that was facilitated, as I said, by the provision of houses for renting by Thomas Akers to the army. And by 1812 or so, by the provision of the Wellington Barracks, close to where the courthouse is nowadays. Also, one can see in that map the town hall, which was known as Akers Hall. And interestingly, also Hop Hill. Uh, which became the site of the new Protestant church in 1815. Now, if you want to know more about how you find out about these things, this is the valuation map of Tullamore in the 1840-54. stroke The first valuation was in 1843, and the second then was in 1854, and that's known as Griffith's valuation. And the numbers that are in the printed valuation for Griffith are matched by the numbers on this map. So, And you can get this map online. And it shows the houses. Where the word hotel is there is number 48 on the map. And the next one where Mary Dunn's house was, the shoe shop, is number 49. And it starts on the left side at number number 6 and 7. Because you may have you may recall that I mentioned to you that the first four houses in High Street are sometimes regarded as part of O'Connor Square and sometimes as part of High Street. Now you won't be able to read this, but this is the printed valuation, starting with T P and our good buddies, uh, which was which is now part of the Bridge Centre, but was originally part of G N Walsh's garage. And moving along then down to number 49 on the second sheet there. And that's from the Griffith's printed valuation, which you can also get online. 
And then you can also look at the 1885, 90, 10 foot scale, or 5 foot scale map rather, which is on UCD Digital Archive. It's in four sheets and it's very informative on the layout of the town at the time, showing the hotel in High Street that we mentioned was only two storey and showing the railings across the street from the Royal Arms that had at the time and then the coach factory of Downs's and further down the constabulary barrack and the brewery of Egan's. So things begin to come together now with the benefit of these maps. And again, this is number one, two and three and four High Street, about 1960. And you can see here that the old GN Walsh attractive shop front is behind the petrol pumps there in High Street and to the left of it, the brewery tap. And then the garage of GN Walsh is in the background there to the far left. Uh, a site that some of you may remember, but not so many nowadays. I mentioned earlier the important photograph. You can see here on the corner, the building where the letter OF is. You can see that that was the Flanagan leasehold of 1787. The date stone is on the archway beside the former Dunn shoe shop, where that figure is standing near to the carriages on the left hand side and that's the old windows are still in situ in that picture the building itself was very extensive and ran from dunn's shoe shop in high street right around as far as but not including the insurance brokers that's there today so it was a different town at the time and here again another view of about 1905 before the uh, telegraph poles, phone poles and electric lighting were installed and you can see the gas lamps in that picture also and then the changes after between then and the war years with the introduction of the motor vehicle in a more serious way and that was all situated around Brawley Walsh's shop which initially was pools and interestingly it was the national companies certainly the car companies who developed advertising and that's not surprising when you listen to the radio today and hear the number of adverts for motor cars and there they are reflected with the Ford Forts and vehicles on the front of uh, Brody Walsh's. That was new at the time because very few other shops had that kind of advertising which we, be, which we nowadays possibly abhor but which was popular in the 60s and 70s. So the streets were full of boxes to be delivered and collected. And you can see here a view of where Anthony Kearns's shop is and the bus bar with one of the one of the constabulary there talking to those men and the gas lamp in the in the foreground. And also just on the tip on the left there is the old door case of the next house past the bus bar. Another view here, and you can see that door case again under the F, the original attractive door case, which is gone now. That house there to the left was intended to be one house, but they knocked in a second door case here beside the nice, attractive, round-headed Georgian door case. The van in the middle is a genuine van. Sometimes these old postcard makers inserted figures to make the postcard more interesting. But that's Lumley's bread van in the centre of the street. Now moving up the street, you have Tutty's sweet shop and uh, an old front of 1880s and a newer front of the 1990s beside it. And another view, including those buildings, but also Kilroy's store of 1908 uh, to 2007, where the art centre is today. And beyond that then was the, uh, you can just see the tip of Kilroy's store there on the right and beside it the old building of the Ulster Bank and then the Bank of Ireland building which is dated to the 1870s. The bank came to Tullamore in the 1830s. Another view there, the Lawrence photograph view and beside that is Adams's uh, pub and grocery. You can see there from the right that the streets were flagged with limestone and that was that can be dated to the 1840s now maps are very important for showing the properties 
and this one shows the very considerable Berry estate in High Street, which was beyond the town house and as far as, but not including the town hall, with a very extensive garden to the rear. One house here that was demolished for providing to make the roadway wider into the new bridge centre here in, in the 1990s, leaving just a surviving tasty takeaway. That also was an old street where initially well-off people lived in Crow Street. Now it's called Tower Street and those houses were demolished in the 1950s. Uh, there could be excitement too on the high street with this steam engine taken outside the office of A&L Goodbody about 1900. And then a very fine property, the Roundhouse, which may have been, may have been even bigger than the present house and was probably built about 1750. Now these two houses were built by the O'Flanagan family because they had a corn mill on the river where the six apartments are now and access to that corn mill was through that gate there and down a very narrow archway into the corn mill itself. Those two houses date from about 1800. The Presbyterian Church then not a big community in Tullamore, but there was a church in Burr and one in Tullamore, and this building is dated to about 1865. And another view of it here, showing the municipal building now, then it was called Acres Hall, and also the provision of water. The more modern fountain is on the left, and the original older one there is in the middle of the street. Uh, another important view then would be the 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 street a coloured postcard showing again the old lodge house that was beside Acres Hall but which was demolished when the hall was refurbished about nineteen ninety. Another aspect that one forgets is that some of these houses had wonderful railings and and uh, were gated, such as the motorworks house, which is here on the right, and further down then is Shishir, and beyond that the direct. Provision Centre, we call it now. Here's a black and white postcard showing the same detail. Forecourt wall and garden was removed and replaced by a garage and petrol pumps in the 1930s for the Roberts family. And here now we have the you know the development of of shopping again and restaurants. And here in High Street, you had the Oak and Cranny, which is now Shashir dating to about 1990. Now, the Moorhead family lived where that lettering GH is in number 32, 33 High Street. That was the first house in Tullamore to get piped water in, in, 19, or in 1895. The Moorheads lived there for nearly 100 years. And again, on the left there, you can see the original fronts of the two houses that were built by the O'Flanagans. Now a little bit busier here with um, the J.J. Horns News Agency and right down to Lawless's pub there where you can see the Williams sign opposite the Boland's bread van. And this is it here today, or well, not quite today, but about 10 years or 15 years ago. That's an old building erected about 1750. Now the history of some of these buildings comes from the leases and on this one here, you can see where I have the arrow now, where the letter, where the N is, or that sign N, looks like an N. Uh, that's the that's the town, that's the, the pub property. But it went right down a long garden and went to Moore Hall, where the, where the same people lived in what was a nice private residence outside of the town centre. And you can see Tullamore's seal there, on the right above the Offaly History logo and the name Moore on the on the left under the AL in Offaly. So it's an interesting map. And that curve on the site is still there in the boundary wall opposite uh, opposite the front of Colosh de Cullum today. High Street lower than Kilroy's, of course, the new facade there is only 1960 and that covered a very interesting front, the remains of which are still behind that facade, and which could do with being restored. And below that you can see the new cinema where the letter I is in high, 
and below that again is Colton's Hotel with the ivy, ivy clad, and of course the filling station outside of the old Kilroy's. This is the house here I'm talking about. It's now owned by Mr. Price, and there's a, a drawing by Fergal McCabe on the right of the original facade. Here's the original facade here, and it really does need to be restored if that's possible. It's a wonderful building that very sadly was uh, damaged in 1960. The other house then to the left has happily been restored very well by its present owners and looks very smart. And a suggestion here really is that we do need radical surgery if we are to assist these larger houses with restoration. Another house that was altered in the 1970s was this Crow House, which we saw earlier in the early 1900 photograph and which uh, was built in 1750. The cinema then was quite a modern design. It was built on, the, on a demolished house site in 1940. And curiously, for one of the newest buildings on the street, it was demolished after 40 years in 1980. And then on your left then is the big Flanagan building with the date stone over the archway uh, showing it as 1787. So today a lot of people live off the high street and not in the towns and not on the street itself. And there are upwards of a 100 residences in what was Crow Street and beyond that in new apartments that have been built uh, since 1994. So I hope you've enjoyed this survey. I've packed as much as I can into it and you can follow it in more detail on 11, 12, 13 blogs that we have on awfullyhistory.com and which were solely about High Street. I hope you enjoy the rest of Heritage Week and thank you very much.